So I'm working on this little Honda Civic CRX. I'll just show you on the back. It's got a funky hatchback. And this is the one that uh, has the dent resistant fenders. They're actually plastic. So is this front piece here. You can see how it cracks instead of dents. It's really light. Interesting little car. This one's a three barrel. It's carbureted. And the vacuum diagram looks like a plate of spaghetti. Neatly organized in two uh, strands. It's just crazy. I'm... Anyway, it's a good thing rubber hoses never deteriorate and crack or else that would be a nightmare once this thing got old. It's a 1987, so yeah. <laughs> it's not even a problem. <laughs> or something. Anyway, long story short, the problem with this one, it's a no start. I've had a lot of requests for videos about cars with no starts, what my diagnostic process is and all that sort of thing and the, when you're me you hate editing there's no way to do a diagnostic process in its entirety without a great deal of editing um, so I've got this one figured out so I'm just going to go through what the process was uh, first when the engine would rotate but not start uh, the first thing I do is I check for spark and I check for camshaft rotation and I also check for fuel injector pulse you know if it's got fuel injection with this I'll just spray some starting fluid that's one of the first things I do is I'll pop the top of this off and then grab a can of starting fluid I'll depress the choke you know so it's open and just go psh, psh. current conditions are this is at 4,500 feet above sea level and it's December it's freezing cold outside so and the humidity is close to zero so with those things bear in mind you know bypass the air fuel mixture and just go for the starting fluid and so that's what I did and it still wouldn't start so I checked for spark and camshaft rotation it does rotate which means that the timing belt is intact and driving um, to do that it's really easy you just take off the it's easy on this one a lot of them have a baffle plate uh, but basically just look and see if that's moving if it's moving you know your timing belt is on it doesn't mean that it's in time just means that it's on. I pull one of the spark plug wires uh, from cylinder number one. I put a spark plug in it. Uh, put the spark plug on this bolt for grounding and see if it's got spark. And it didn't have spark, no spark. So I'm like, aha, got it. So I put a new distributor in it because all the things responsible for spark are in the distributor with the exception of the ignition coil. Um, but so that's what I do. Put that in there, crank it over, and uh, it's got spark like crazy all of a sudden. It's doing great as far as that goes, but still won't start. With a no start, you need to have a tool that's really valuable. It's your brain, and in that brain, you need to know the car has to have. I don't mean this to sound derogatory by any means. You know, don't even go there if you're thinking that. But you need to think in terms of does it have spark? Does it have air fuel mixture? Does it have timing? and does it have compression it's got to have all of those things and some people shorten it down to having spark at the right time but if your timing belts off that has almost nothing to do with spark you have all the spark in the world but if your timing belts off a little bit it'll have the valves open and close at the wrong time in this case it had spark at the wrong time <laughs> the new distributor that i got bless their hearts uh, whoever remanufactured this distributor put this on in the wrong position and it took a little while to figure that out um, but basically you've got a little circlip uh, that holds the pin in and the pin holds this with reference to the shaft and then the shaft and the rotor um, kind of do the rest if I'd have been paying a lot better attention when I took the old one apart I just assumed that this would be correct and that's not always correct sometimes you get new parts that are jacked up and can create all kinds of headache but if you know your fundamentals if I would have looked at the position of the rotor and said, okay, that rotor's positioned just like that, and I did look at it out of good habit, but when it was wrong, I blamed it on myself because I wasn't real clear and thorough in recognizing the position. Let's see how this one's a long one. I'm like, oh, well, I thought it was this way when it was really that way. So anyway... Long story short, i got to take this off and switch it over. When you look at these, it's a brilliant design because it can only go on one way. I mean, it's just a slot, and it's not a slot in the middle. It's off-center a little bit. With that being the case, um, you know, it was off 180 degrees when it was firing, so it was firing on the dead stroke. 
So I'll pull that off, put it back in, and see what we've got. Let me show you what it looks like testing for spark and testing the camshaft. I didn't have another person here, so I set up a tripod and a camera to film it um, after replacing the distributor to verify spark was there and that the camshaft was rotating. So I flipped the thing in the distributor 180. You can only put the rotor on one way. That's the other thing I meant to clarify. And I'm, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not in the shop because I know when this starts it's going to be so flooded from all the attempts before. Uh, I better do it out here. Still not starting. Still not starting. Starter's getting hot. Positive cable's getting hot. That's a close one. We'll let those cables and we'll let that starter cool down for a couple seconds. We'll try it again. I'm gonna hold the throttle to the floor because I know it's got tons of gas in it. It's very flooded. One of the things I forgot to share is the spark plug. Maybe I said it already. The spark plug gap on this was jacked up that uh, had a master cylinder leaking into the power brake booster and the vacuum hose was sucking it into the intake and the spark plug gap was closed. It had this black pillar, you know, in the spark plug gap. And plus it, that happened after, I think that happened just from compression burn uh, from when it didn't have spark. I think it's gonna start. There we go. Come on, baby! It's got to clear its throat. I'm in neutral and it's going forward. I'm going to jam it into park. But the car runs now. <laughs> it wouldn't run before with that thing being off 180. But it's running now. It's always scary when you go to do something like this. You have a problem like this because are you going to catch it? Or, you know, Are you going to figure that out? Or are you going to replace the timing belt? Because by to get to the timing belt on this particular uh, creature, bless its heart, <laughs> you have to take off the air cleaner box, which is a big chore, there's a lot of layers, as it's attached to the valve cover. And then you can take the valve cover off because it goes over the end of that uh, cam timing belt cover. So just to get to that, and say you're just using the harmonic balancer marks for TDC, um, it's gonna be a pain. It's not gonna be anything fun, quick, and easy. So instead, because I was, fortunately I was paying attention a little bit at least when I did the distributor to be able to catch that being off. Man, this thing was so flooded. When I pulled the plugs and discovered that the gap was closed on them, I also noticed that the threads were jacked up so I didn't do a compression test. This thing could have had bad compression or something. Look at all that nasty crap coming out. That's why it's out here and not in the garage. So anyway, let me show you what that spark plug mess was all about. So this is what I was trying to describe to you. You see how the spark plug gap's closed? So the first thing that happened is the distributor failed. Uh, it was specifically the igniter in the distributor, but I couldn't find an igniter. I could only find a distributor. So I replaced the distributor, but because it, they cranked it and cranked it and cranked it and tried so hard so long to try to get that thing to run, they caused the spark plug gap to go away because I was using a whole separate spark plug when I was testing for spark. Half of that's brake fluid going in through the power brake booster. We got a new master cylinder in it now. But uh, <clears throat> I'm so glad this thing runs because I really don't like working on this car anymore. There's the cover I was telling you about, and to get this off, you have to take this off, and to take this off, you have to take that off to get to the bolts that hold that down. It gets to be a lot of work. This car's not worth a lot of money, and they already spent the money putting in a new master cylinder because it was leaking into the power brake booster, and this is where the fluid was going up into the intake and creating such havoc. What a mess. This is what you call trophy diagnostics when you have something that's just really screwed up <laughs> and then you buy parts and then the parts are screwed up and then you still get it right and still come in on budget <laughs> for what you quoted. So I'm proud of what I did here, but what a mess. I'm glad to be done with it. Very glad to be done with it.